Hey everybody, hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. I have got the cutest project for you guys. Designs by Juju has come out with a quilted Christmas stocking that you can make completely in the hoop in your embroidery machine. This is an amazing, fun, quick and easy project. It only takes one hooping. And I am making one for every member of my son's family, including the dog. And that's the one I'm gonna make with you today. This turned out just adorable. This is a great project if you have got fabric scraps left over from Christmas past, you've got bundles or whatever left over. It's a wonderful project to use up your batting scraps, your stabilizer scraps, and you can knock these out really quick. I do go through in Brilliance Essentials and show you how to customize with lettering, and I even did a little applique on the top of the stocking for the dog. So, these are a lot of fun. Let's get to it. Christmas stocking, it's an in the hoop project from Designs by Juju, and I have in Brilliance Essentials opened right here, and this is a six by 10 hoop I've got. I'm gonna make the five by seven stocking. So I will come up here to the little yellow folder at the top of the screen. That's my preferences button. Click that. And I believe I want the 130 by 180. Yes, that says approximately five by seven. I'll just click okay. Makes it a little smaller and then I'll use my mouse wheel to scroll in and make it a little bigger. There, that's about right. I need to bring the design into the screen and so I'm just going to click on the little yellow folder at the bottom of my screen and I've got them right here. I want to do the cross hatch. There are several different versions of background quilting in these stockings. Let me go to view and extra large icons so you can see them better. You can see these embroidery designs on my screen like little pictures because I am using Embrilliance Thumbnailer also on my system. And that will allow you to see embroidery designs like little icons. So these are separated by size and by design. The only difference between these are the background quilting designs that are on the stocking. Other than that, they are all identical. And then of course the size. So we have a five by seven cross hatch, five by seven plaid, five by seven stipple, and a five by seven striped. And then you have all four of them again in a six by 10, seven by 12, and so on. So you have to decide what size of stocking you want to make. So I want to make this cross hatch. One thing I will mention right here is that this embroidery design is fairly dense. And so if you have got focus fabric that has a lot of image on it that you want to show, this might not be a good design. This would be really good if you were using a plain fabric and then the star of the show is the stitching. Whereas designs like this one or the stipple or the stripes will allow the fabric to be the star of the show. So I'm gonna just grab this five by seven. I'm gonna click on it and drag it over into the screen and that's it. Now this particular stocking is going to be for my son's family dog. I'm making them for everybody in the family, so I want to make one for Sophie as well. I want to customize it with a little applique on here and some lettering for her name. I'm gonna open up another tab by coming up here and clicking on this new icon. It looks like a little white piece of paper with a yellow star on it. I'm gonna click that and that opens up a new tab right here. And I'm gonna come back down here. And Designs by Juju also has this design called Puppy Bone and it is from Itch to Stitch. And I've been playing with this and I know that the four by four will work. I'm not sure why I can't see those that time. I have a new computer. I'm still working through this, but there's my puppy bone right there. Let me minimize this. I don't want the puppy at all, but I want the bone and that's an applique. So if I come over here to the objects panel and click on this plus sign, 
that opens up all of the elements that make up the design. And as we go through here, when we click on an element, it will highlight over here on the screen. So you can tell this is an applique design. So this is the placement line for the ears. There's the tack down for the ears. Placement line for the face. Tack down for the face. Placement line for the bone. I want that. And there's the tack down for the bone. I definitely want that. And then we get into the final satin stitching. We have ears, the head, there's the bone, and then we go on with elements in the face. So what I'm going to do is come back up here and I'm going to highlight there is the placement line for the bone. I'm going to hold down the control key to do a multiple selection. I'm going to click the tack down line for the bone and I'm going to click the final satin stitching for the bone. And then not here in the objects panel, but over here on the screen, I'm going to just right click and copy. And then I'm going to come back over here to this first tab and right click and paste. Very nice. And I'm going to shrink this down just a little bit, get it down to size to where it will fit in here and you can't always resize things but in brilliance does a pretty good job of it so i just want to get it down so that it fits right i've got a little space up here and a little space over there and then i'm going to grab this and i'm just going to drag it look how it resizes so easy it does a pretty good job you can zoom in and you can see it's really done nicely. We don't have any gaps in the stitching or anything. I think that looks really good. Let me click off of it. I might nudge it up just a little bit. Normally you could try to center this in the design by using these alignment buttons up here. The problem is this is not just all the design is, is the bone and the cuff that's up here because we've got some little stitches that happen out here. And then we also have the rest of the design comes all the way over here. And so you really don't have a center point. So you kind of have to eyeball this one. But I like it. I think it looks good. All right. So let's notice over here now in the objects panel, this is actually a stitch order. Click off. So it's going to stitch the entire stocking and then it's going to stitch the bone. So we will play with the stitch order in just a little bit. Now I want to add some lettering. I'm going to come up here to the A and just click on the A and that is to create letters. And it defaults. I just rolled my mouse wheel and that's why the screen got a little smaller. It's just easier to see. The default is a block font and it automatically goes into the middle of whatever it is that you have on the screen. And I'm going to come over here in the properties box. We've got four tabs for color, letters, stitch, and notes. So if you're on the color, you won't be able to see it. But if you are on the letters tab, you can see it. And I'm going to change ABC. I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to type Sophie and hit enter. There we go. That looks good. And now I want to change the font that it is. To do that, you can just come right here where it says block and hit this drop down arrow. And here are all of the fonts that we have. So a lot of these are designs by Juju. I love using these. I think they work great. Let's try this Archie half inch. There we go. That looks really nice. Okay, so it's cute. Not on a green box, but on the letter itself. You can grab it and move the whole thing. That looks really good. And I'm just going to squeeze it down a little bit until it fits. That looks nice. And then while the letters are highlighted and hit control and highlight puppy bone and just select those two items. I'm going to come up here to the align and distribute and I want to center those right there. So they will be centered vertically and I want to center horizontally and click apply. There we go. 
So you might have seen it nudge just a tiny bit. So that's how you center just a couple of elements in the design and not the whole design. So I'm just going to click close now. That looks really good. I like it. As far as I'm concerned, it'll stitch out just fine, just like that. Now what I need to do is make sure that it stitches in the right order. And if you read the instructions on the quilted stocking, it tells you that if you're going to customize, you have to do it right before we get to the placement line for the hanging loop. So what I'm going to do is open up the stocking design over here in the objects panel by clicking the plus sign. And I am looking for where that loop is. And it's actually right here. That's number eight. So the way to do this, it needs to stitch before this line right here. And to do that, I'm going to highlight by clicking on the picture and I'm going to click on the picture of the letters and hold down the control key so that both of them are selected and not on the letters but on the picture you want to drag it up so that it is hovering just under the one you want it to stitch after. So I'm going to grab these and pull it up to right there. See puppy bone beneath where it says brother embroidery pink and let go. So let's see what we've got. So it'll stitch, there's the tack down line for the top part of the stocking. Then it's going to do placement line for the bone, tack down for the bone, final satin stitching for the bone. It went into different elements. So puppy bone became element number two. The letters are element number three. And the remainder of the stocking is element number four. But the first thing that happens in the remainder of the stocking is the placement line for the hanging loop. So try not to get confused when you see that because if you just click on the grouping, it looks like it's gonna finish stitching the stocking, which it is, but this can be kind of confusing when it's on the screen. But the first element of that is there. So that gives you your customization before you are ready to finish stitching the rest of the stocking. So we're all done now. All I need to do, I have a brother luminaire. If you have any brother or baby lock wireless capable machine like the luminaire or the Solaris, a brother Stellaire, the brother Entrepreneur Pro 10 needle, or the Altair, they all work with this. My viewers have been telling me, you can click on Utility, and it says Send to Solaris XP1. Click that. Your machine needs to be turned on and have gone through the initial clicking OK and let the arm move around all that. And I'm just going to type Sophie and click OK and it says file sent to machine. That's great. Now, if you don't have one of those machines that uses that wireless technology, then you will come up here to file and you will go to save stitch file as, and you can save it to a USB stick by clicking on this drop down arrow right here and navigate down to the USB drive, okay? And then right here where it says save as type, you want to make sure it is saved to your home embroidery file format and you can name it by putting in the name and then clicking save. So I'm just going to click cancel now because it's already over at the machine. I'm getting ready to make another stocking for the family dog and I wanted to show you uh, some options that you can do in order to customize this. I want to explain to you what you're going to need. So you will need a piece of batting. This is just a, a scrap of 80-20 off-white. And I have two pieces of fabric for the outside and the back of the stocking. I have the top piece of the, of the stocking is going to be in black. And then this tan is going to be the applique for the little bone. These two pieces of fabric right here are going to be for the lining of the stocking. And if you wanted to put some fleece on the top, this is a piece of fleece, then you would want to 
cut out your little fleece. I had made snowballs years ago and the this is a piece of scrap from that. So in the case of this stocking, instead of the black, I would be using the white, okay? And I, so I'm not gonna use fleece on this one. If you do use fleece, you're going to need what's called a topper. This is a product by Sulky. It almost feels like Glad Press and Seal. It's, a, it's got more body to it than Saran Wrap, but it is not a cutaway. This is a water-soluble topper, and it will just tear away after it finishes stitching. But if you're gonna use fleece or a minky or any kind of plush fabric where the stitches will bury down into the nap and the fibers, then you're gonna need to use a piece of this. In the instructions, it says that you can, for the lining and back fabric, you can cut one big long piece and fold it in half. And if you do that, you're going to get the front of the stocking and the back of the stocking in two different fabric patterns. Or you can cut one piece of lining fabric and another piece of fabric for the back, but what you would do is sew them together with a one quarter inch seam allowance. It seems a little counterintuitive, but as you turn it, your lining fabrics will be facing each other to make the lining. So if you, if you do the whole one long piece method, you're gonna have one fabric on the front and one fabric on the back. If you do the two piece method, you will have the same fabric on the front and the back. So it's completely up to you what look you're going for. If you don't have a printed fabric like this or you're using all the same fabric, you could just use the one long piece and it wouldn't make a difference. But I am using different fabrics for my lining and my front. It, it calls it the bottom fabric. In the directions it says bottom fabric, that's this piece right here, the bottom fabric. And then it talks about top fabric and that's this little piece right up here that would be the cuff. So I'm gonna go sew together one piece of my bottom fabric and one piece of my lining with a quarter inch seam allowance on the short side, right sides facing. And I will be right back. When you finish sewing these together, you wanna fold them so that they're wrong sides together and the seam is right on the very top edge of the fold. I managed to get it pretty close here on this one, you can see the seam is right on the edge. If you want to make your own custom hanging tag, you can take a piece of fabric four times as wide as you want the hanging loop to be. So this is a two by six inch strip. I'm just going to fold it in half and make a crease with the iron. I'm not using any kind of stabilizer in it or anything, don't need to do that. Okay, cool off a second. And then I'm just gonna fold it in to the middle on both long edges. So I wanted mine to be a half inch wide hanging loop. And then just fold these two open edges together and I'm going to press that and then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and stitch down an eighth of an inch on each side with black thread. And then I'll fold it in half and that will be my hanging loop. That'll work perfect. Okay, I have no-show poly mesh hooped in my 6x10 embroidery hoop. And I'm going to put it in the machine. I'm using a 70 weight pre-wound dime bobbin and I have a 7511 needle in the machine. It's an Oregon 7511 needle. If you own a brother or a baby lock and you're experiencing thread shredding and you're not using Oregon needles, that could be the problem. They are timed with them at the factory. To change out my threads, I put the two long ends together of the old and the new and I just twist them a couple of times and then I do a simple single knot, like that. And then I reach in front of the needle. You can't pull the knot through the needle. 
and I'll just pull it through. Okay. All right, and all right. So I have pulled the design up on the luminaire. I'm going to touch embroidery. And we're ready to go. And the first thing it's going to do is stitch the placement line for the batting. I'm going to lay my scrap of batting over the placement line and then I'm just going to stitch it down. There's a school of thought that there is a bumpy side to the batting and a smooth side and the bumpies are like pimples and you don't want to show your pimples so you would put your bumpy side down. In projects like this that doesn't really matter. Some battings have it, especially those that are not poly. Great, okay. Now what I need to do is to remove the hoop and trim away the batting. You're going to want to use some curved embroidery scissors. These are gingers. You guys don't go cheap. You want to get good ones because cheap ones hurt your fingers. These have a bend in them to get down into a hoop and they will last you forever. I've had these for more than 10 years. When you cut things out, you want to have a firm surface of some sort on your lap so you don't pop the embroidery out of the hoop. Quilters cut and press will work really well. The uh, corrugated plastic that is in between the magnetic hoops will work. You want to lift up the batting and just trim it away in nice long cuts so it's not real jagged. The curve of the scissors will make sure you don't trim the thread and cut into the stabilizer. If you cut into the thread a little bit it's no big deal but just try not to do that. This is a great use of batting scraps. Okay, that looks good. And put the hoop back into the machine. And now it's going to stitch the placement line for the bottom half of the stocking. You want to take your front fabric, I've got a great big piece, you don't have to do it this big, and you want to lay it over this line about a quarter of an inch. Just put it right over it, just a quarter of an inch. You can lay it there and it'll stick. If it makes you more comfortable, you can use some paper tape and tape it down so that it holds if you think it'll run around on you. This is 3M paper tape, you can get like 10 rolls of it. Real inexpensive on Amazon. I've got it in my Amazon store. So I'm over this and now it's going to stitch it across here and all the way around the outside of the stocking. Okay, now it's time for the all over crosshatch quilting. Now you need to remove the hoop and we're going to place the fabric for the top part of the stocking. I'm going to take the top part of the stocking, I'm going to lay it on so that these edges right here meet. And it gives me that quarter inch over. You can tape it if you want, you don't have to. And then stitch that down. Now what you want to do is to fold this up, push it flat, and give it a little crease with your fingernail, okay? And then you can take a piece of tape and hold it up flat and tape it up behind at the top. And then you're going to sew down the tack down line for the top part of the stocking. Here's where I customized. 
I'm going to do a thread color change to make the placement line for the bone. I've got a little bit of thread tail that didn't get pulled down in, so I'm going to go ahead and trim that right now. That happens, that's no big deal. And I'm going to lay my fabric down to cover the, app, the placement line. And I'm going to trim away the fabric around the tack down. Make sure I don't catch that black fabric. It's time for the final satin stitching around the outside of the bone. It will do an all-around zigzag first, and then it will do the satin stitching. I'm going to do a thread color change for the customization on the name. Next is the placement line for the hanging tag. I'm going to leave it in black. Right, now I'm going to take the hanging loop and with the open edges to the outside, I'm going to put it right over the placement line by about half an inch, five eighths, something like that. I'm going to take some tape. On the, it's tougher on these smaller ones. But first, I want to take some tape and I'm just going to tape it, the ends together. I'm going to tape the ends right over that mark line like this. Okay. And then I want to take another piece of tape and I want to tape this kind of down so that it doesn't get in the way of when we put the lining on. So I'm going to keep that kind of angled down a little bit like that. Okay. Now we're going to have the tack down for the hanging loop. I'm going to remove the hoop and remove this tape. I don't need it there. Okay, now you want to take the piece of fabric that is the two that are sewn together or the one long piece that is folded in half. When the tack down for the top fabric stitched, it made two little hash marks and you want to put the lining fabric face up. You want to put the lining fabric face up, the back of the stocking face down and you want to put this right up to that little hash mark on both sides and then I'm going to tape it. Place your hoop back into the machine. You want to make sure that you don't have this fabric over those two hash marks or else you're going to sew it closed. So we're going to tack this whole thing down now. Now you want to take your last lining piece face down and put it and cover the entire design. And it will do a final closure stitch and it'll leave you a little opening to turn down here at the bottom. I didn't change my thread back, it doesn't matter. If your fabric is directional, you want it to be with the top up here at the top. Okay, we're ready to remove the hoop and I'm going to take my rotary cutter and trim one half inch away all the way around. Except down here at the opening I'm going to leave just a little bit more to work with to turn it and close it. You might want to do this with scissors depending on how comfortable you are with a rotary blade. On this outer curve I'm going to make some notches to but not through the seam line give that fabric somewhere to go when we turn it. Tiny little clips like that. See that? Got little clips in there. And then here at this sharp curve I'm just going to make some snips up to the seam line but not through it. 
You do snips on in and clips on out. Makes everybody pretty happy. I'm going to come to the stitch line and just make a clip like that so that I've got a little tab right there. That gives me a little bit more to work with. Okay, I'm going to take at the corners and clip at a 45. So that fabric has somewhere to go. There. I should have made the bigger one. This is going to be tough to turn. <laughs> if you have arthritic fingers, you're going to want to make the larger stockings. Okay, once you get it turned, this is what it looks like. And those little tabs have just naturally kind of folded themselves inside. I'm going to take it over to the ironing board and I'm going to put a little piece of stitch witchery in there and seal it closed. I'll be right back. Okay, and then now it is permanently closed on that inside little seam. And I'm going to flip it one more time through the neck. And you'll pull off your tape from where your little hanging loop is. And the hanging loop's almost as big as the sock. <laughs> I'm going to trim up my little jump threads here and then I'll be done. But this turned out adorable. This is almost perfect for an ornament size, but I got a couple of little milk bones in here that I think will be awesome in her stocking. <laughs> So there's the dog's little Christmas stocking. How cute is that? That turned out adorable. You guys have fun with this. Go sew something. Bye.